we've talked about the main electrical hazards, shocks and arcing. We've considered the risks, likelihood, and severity of injury. So now it's time to talk about the most important topic of all, how to make sure we go home safe. If you want a simple and effective way to cover safety in production, check out the NFPA 70E in the hierarchy of risk control. It is one of the most underutilized tools in the industry, but it's easy to find and understand. Take a look at the cover of the 2018 edition or the infographic on the back cover of the 2021 handbook. The hierarchy of risk control methods is broken down into six strategies that provide a recommended order of solutions when faced with an electrical hazard. It starts with the safest method and moves through higher risk methods. In order they are, elimination, substitution, engineering controls, awareness, administrative controls, personal protective equipment. You don't have to use one method over another. In fact, using multiple methods to reduce your risks can be one of the most effective strategies. As we go through the list, you'll see a difference between the top three methods and the bottom three. The top half of the list is less dependent on human performance, decision making, and adherence to rules, making those methods more reliable. We'll call the top three methods inherent controls and the bottom three dependent controls. Elimination is the top method for controlling an electrical hazard. Put simply, it's removing a hazard or risk so it doesn't exist. It's a no-brainer that if a hazard doesn't exist, then no one can be injured by it. Some ways to do it are identifying and removing unused electrical conduits and energized conductors from your facility. Replacing 120 volt AC control systems with 24 volt DC control systems. Creating an electrically safe work condition temporarily eliminates the hazard. It's better classified as an administrative control because employee engagement is required. The next best method for reducing electrical hazard is substitution. In a lot of situations, it's more achievable than total elimination. What we're trying to do with substitution is to minimize the hazard. If you want a good strategy for substitution, you could install current limiting fuses or adjust circuit breaker instantaneous settings to reduce arc flash levels. Engineering controls work off the same concept as substitution. So what's the difference? It's the point the strategy is initiated. Engineering controls are designed to isolate the employee from the hazard and reduce the risk of an incident. Some examples are equipment guards, zone interlocks, and maintenance mode energy reduction switches. During the breakout sections, we'll discuss the first three inherent safety controls with the engineer and maintenance manager. Remember, facility leadership should always aim for inherent controls when designing protections for employees. Here's where we cross the line from inherent to dependent safety controls. We need to be aware that human error and availability will play a bigger role in the success of these controls. The fourth method is awareness. And that simply means letting people know what's going on through the use of signs, alarms, and warning decals. It's an important part of reducing risk. And in most cases, it's required. But this effectiveness is more of a supplement to the other methods. Moving on, our fifth method is administrative controls. These are all the things you and your organization do behind the scenes to repair for a hazardous situation. We're talking about programs, trainings, assessments, procedures, and internal messaging. These methods can be a very effective if your team is on board and engaged. The downside is that if you don't have a culture of safety, a lot of this can amount to checking off boxes of legal requirements. So, try to encourage safety as a habit because administrative controls can be a simple, effective way to 
reduce the likelihood and severity of an event. Personal protective equipment is the final method of risk control. If you're a safety, maintenance, or production manager, you should really think about this as the last line of defense. It's not a great primary strategy to rely on workers wearing their PPE regularly. If you're a qualified worker working on or near energized equipment, now you can see how you can play your part. Always aim to create an electrically safe work condition when possible. And always wear your PPE when interacting with electrical equipment. Taking the time to properly suit up in your PPE could mean the difference between going home or not at the end of your shift. There are six methods for controlling risk that fall into two categories, inherent and dependent. Inherent methods target the equipment to create safer working conditions and fewer situations. Dependent methods rely on worker participation. Remember, these six methods are recommended in order of their effectiveness in limiting hazardous electrical situations. Let's look at the inherent methods again. Number one, elimination. That means we completely remove the risk. Number two, substitution. That involves replacing the hazard with something less dangerous. Number three, engineering controls. This is similar to substitution, but are designed to isolate employees from hazards. Then, getting into dependent methods. Number four, awareness. This means labeling and notifying employees of hazards. Number five, administrative controls. This includes training, processes, and procedures. And number six, personal protective equipment. Habitually wearing properly rated PPE could save hundreds of lives each year. That's the end of our segment on hazards, risks, and controls. A lot of what we discuss will be covered in the physician-specific sections to follow. Please remember, electricity can be extremely dangerous. We should always try to avoid interacting with the hazard if possible. Always aim to create an electrically safe work condition. If you need to work energized, it's a must to use insulated tools and always wear your PPE. All right, it's time to get up, stretch your legs, and dive into an exercise. In this exercise, we'll identify some of your most common tasks. Then we'll list the hazards and risks associated with them. Once you've completed the exercise and filled out the information on this, this, this page, please deliver it to the safety manager. We'll use this information later on in our training, so make sure to complete it before you move on to the next section. In an effort to avoid groupthink and gain as many perspectives as possible, please perform this task 